Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking whatever. It's Whatever Wednesday. Ah, this our, is... our day of the week where we throw some content out there that is not bourbon oriented. You know this is a bourbon channel, right? It is, and that's why instead of doing Mondays and Thursdays when we usually release our bourbon reviews and yeah. using them up on other whiskeys, uh -huh. we're doing Whatever Wednesday so uh -huh. we can explore some other stuff. Okay, so I gotta ask, what's in the box? Uh, what's in the box? It's whiskey. What's in the box? Ah. So, we've got in the box. Now, admittedly, this bottle has been drank from, but we have, bam, this is Macallan 15 Fine Oak. And I'm gonna keep the box out here because it has the information. So this is a triple cast finished uh, single malt Highland Scotch. And the casks are European oak cask seasoned with sherry, American oak cask seasoned with sherry, and American oak cask seasoned with bourbon. So there we go. Delightful. It's yeah. 86 proof. It's from the Scotland. We've yeah, as, as evident by the fact that it's Scotch. Sure and and they there. don't use the letter E when they spell whiskey. Sure. So this bottle runs, I think, about 125 or something like that. Miles per hour. Yes. <laughs> That's I did he, say runs. That's so, where he's going with I did a rather large pour. I apologize. That's okay. You can pour as much as you want. Um, so you and I are obviously very, very bourbon-forward people. Um, bourbon. But, yes, bourbon and the channel. But we do have a couple other whiskeys on the shelf. We like to explore some other flavor profiles and stuff. That's true, that's why we do Whatever Wednesday. Yeah. Where we can explore some of those other things that we collect. So when I first started out drinking whiskey, I actually got into, well, the first pour that I had where I was just like, oh, I think I could actually drink whiskey was actually a bourbon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I started exploring different stuff Then I kind of like looking at Irish whiskey and then scotch. And I think one of the reasons for that is uh, there were a lot of, like, I found Irish whiskey to be very easy to drink. Approachable, yep. Because a lot of them are commonly lower proof, and scotches are like that too. Like, this is this an is, expensive this scotch, is 86. but it's 86 proof. Yeah. Whereas bourbon tends to kind of be all over the board proof points. It does. And I didn't know that at the time, but I just kind of gravitated toward this, and I I liked scotch, and I was kind of thought I was gonna be a scotch guy at first, and then I got into bourbon, and it just took over. So, so, so for those of you who are bourbon people, thank you for watching. Um, and maybe you're offended that we're trying something so far outside the... It's whatever Wednesday. Yeah. We, we Our normal videos are Monday and Thursday. So tomorrow there will be another bourbon video, we promise. Yeah. However, I, I too, a number of years ago, thought I was going to be a Scotch guy. And mm -hmm. so I really tried. And by far my favorite um, distillery was McAllen. Okay. Um, I've had a few of their products. And they're freaking amazing. I've had a few other scotches from different parts of Scotland and they vary a ton. Even more the bourbon. I think the variation really? between scotches really, really makes a huge difference. But See, I don't I, get that aside, taking Isla out of the mix because that's yeah. a completely different ball but game. Even but even Johnny Walker sometimes gets a bit, I mean, it's which great. Which is a blend. It is a blend. Yeah. Um, and then there's a bunch of other blends that use different, I don't know. Scotches are just interesting. It's a totally different environment. I really don't understand it very well. But McAllen, I feel, and probably a lot of people are offended by this, I feel it's kind of the standard. It's a very good, and, sure. they, and they have a bunch of different ages, and they do some finish Well, saying stuff. it's the standard is not necessarily a bad thing. Like, no. it's just a standard. Well, like, saying it's the standard. Yeah, I don't know. You know, so. Yeah. This is um, not the sc scotch note. But right. But on the nose, I get so much out of this. And it... I have a hard time saying what I get from scotch though, like picking so notes what out. I'm what I'm getting from this is it's obviously um, malted barley. It's fresh apples. I always get apples and pears. I've said that in every single apple, malt we've apple ever drank. Apple and because it's very bright and kind of like bright really Bright and fruity crisp. and it's light, you know, used casks. 
There is a little bit of vanilla on top of all that. Maybe like a honeysuckle. Like there's some really interesting, bright, smooth, sweet notes. Yeah, it's very bright for sure. But but when I drink it, it's not as sweet. It's well, let's, good. Let's do that well, and let's see what do happens. That, yeah. You know, I will say, compared to a lot of other um, single malts that I've had, whether it's a scotch, mostly scotch, but there are some American single malts sure. and stuff like that yeah. where it's... Strandhands is awesome. Yeah, I can't call it scotch because yeah. it's not made in Scotland, but it is the same mash bill. Ish. And maybe aged similarly. Yeah. I know Strandhands is not, but... Yeah. Um, I do get a little extra bite on this one. You get a little bit of that barrel. I mean, it is it's a triple, triple cast. cast. Yeah, I think that helps. What I find interesting, though, is if you were to take a bourbon in triple cask of bourbon. I have no idea if that even exists. It does, like, well, it... there's a Doc Swinson's, I think that one, the Alter Ego. We haven't tried that one yet, but I think that's a triple cask. That would be amazing. I think there's three casks. And, well, the, look at this one. Um, the burning oh, chair. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's a three different that's true. wine that barrel was cask. Three different. Cask strength. Yeah. But I just wonder, like, like on the nose, I have a hard time distinguishing this from other scotches that I've had. And I know scotch people are gonna be, you know, but I'm not a scotch guy, I'm a bourbon guy. So I, I feel like I'm a novice in this. A department. lot of that is exactly what you're saying. You're a novice. Like mm. you're not an expert in scotch to be able to break it down like you could a bourbon. Yeah. Um, and I totally agree, I same way. But I really genuinely like this. Yeah, it's good. I still have the word bourbon on my shirt, not scotch, no mm -hmm. offense to the Scotland, but, but I like this a lot. I own a couple of scotches. And I'll, I will always keep one or two just for sure, occasionally yeah. you're in the mood. Yeah, I've got a couple other ones down here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's always like, um, I just find with that malted barley mash bill, I kind of get very similar notes on all, like I don't know the difference between Highland and Speyside and Campbelltown and Lowland. Yeah. Except, for like, I, except for Isla because it is so unique and peaty. Yeah. For the most part. This is really nice though, it's good. So. I, I am gonna say something negative though. Okay. I genuinely like the flavor, but I'm like, I did maybe a tiny bit too big of a pour and I'm gonna be regretting it by the time we get to the end of it. It has nothing to do with the alcohol content. It's just the flavor and the richness. By the time I get to the end of it, I'm done. <laughs> like I don't need to try a scotch again for six months. Really, that long? However, if this were a bourbon, and again, nothing to do with the alcohol and getting You could drunk. drink it all night if it was Yeah, bourbon. like you just, those are flavors that are in my wheelhouse. And you know what, that's, just before you said that, that's actually what I was gonna say, is like, I like this, but bourbon to me, just because again, mm -hmm. I'm a bourbon guy. Yep. Um, just really has, it's, it's, like you said, it's my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. just like you, it's, it's my favorite. Yes. And so, well, I like this. I like this a lot, but. Getting a little tobacco. Oh, I thought you were like, gonna go with Tabasco. I just got a, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I just got a little bit of burn and, and I don't think it's like. The, now you've insulted scotch yeah, people. No, and I'm not getting there because I'm getting a little bit of burn on the sides of my tongue. Mm -hmm. It's not vinegary at all. So no, I don't even know if they know it in Scotland know what Tabasco is. That's an American thing. Maybe. It, it's a hot sauce made with vinegar. I'm not getting that at all. Are but you I, getting like a vinegar sort of no, note? No, no, not no, not at all. Because I can a, actually see that on specific whiskey. No, maybe. it's more like a oak spice on the sides of my tongue. Burn. And okay. it's, it's light, it's 86 proof, but. Um, yeah, the more like I'm, I'm letting it sit, like I'm in, just in my mouth after even not taking a sip for a minute mm -hmm. or so, getting kind of a tobacco flavor, which what is it, nice, I like that. It actually, maybe you're right. Maybe it is like a, like you've smoked a cigar. Mm -hmm. And so like the, there's a little bit of like heaviness or feeling, like the yeah. smoke. Um, not that this is a smoky not, scotch. It's not a smoky scotch, but it just has a really interesting character to it. Mm -hmm. And I think it, I blame it on the malted barley, which is an interesting grain. Because that's all that's in it. it that is, well, <laughs> and water. Well, right, yeah. And love. Yes. But yeah, I just, I, I don't know, I find... I like this a lot but I don't want it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, you like, don't want this every day like you want a bourbon every exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. And then some people have that with bourbon where they're like, like bourbon and, is just too aggressive. And of again, a there are people and... in Scotland, thank you for watching, 
who would take this 10 times out of 10 and not want well like, there are people in america too that will do well, that yeah you know? that's fair but yeah it, it's just so i it's just my personal preference here's all right so i'm gonna say this and this is gonna be the one insult that i'm gonna say it's okay so and again this is coming from a, a bourbon forward person this is a 15 year aged triple cast aged whiskey. I feel like there should be a lot more going on here than there is. And $120. At $120. I feel like there should be a lot more going on here than there is. Like, I feel like you can take a five year bourbon, double oak it and charge $50 for it and really have more of a bold flavor profile, which again, that may not be what you're looking for if you're a which one? Uh, empty glass. Oh, what are we drinking? <laughs> so, I I should probably consult with you. You can, but there is anything a, you want. There is a bourbon behind me. Okay. That I know that you're not the biggest fan of. Okay. I'm not the biggest fan of. It's pot stilled. Is it Johnny Drum? It is. Okay. But I'm curious what the least favorite bourbon <laughs> that I can think of at the moment. What we think of that compared to. This I mean, is another fun part of whatever Wednesday is just... Exactly. We can like, go for a, a half an hour on this nonsense. And, and, I, just, and I totally acknowledge I'm insulting the entirety of the amazing country of Scotland. This is not the right lid. Well, are you going to need some more of that? A gonna... little bit. If anybody's still following which lid goes to which bottle at this point, it's like one of those games with the cork and the... Well, this one's a screw top, so <laughs> that helps. <laughs> But now I don't know which one I have is in which class. Uh, you should be able to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just night and day. I'm fairly certain there has never been a McAllen 15 year versus Johnny Drum. Uh, which... You saw it here first on the bourbon note. My Johnny Drum is on the left. Okay. You can tell in the color on <laughs> which one's which. So I've been sipping on this with no water. I'm gonna go to this. This is a Johnny, the Johnny drum. drum. So, side note, neither one of us are in love with this bourbon. It is very bourbon-y, but it's kind of probably... Big red gum, a little bit. Nice, enveloping caramel. Mm -hmm. It does have that mustiness that we don't like off of some not, Willet I'm products. I'm getting that, and I think maybe the <laughs> Having the scotch beforehand. Mm -hmm. On the nose, I think, to be honest, I absolutely love the McKellen nose. I do, but it reminds me of every other scotch I've had. And that's it's that's fair, the problem I have. Enough, is it, it's like, this has been 15 year age and three casks, and it's still- Malted barley. I can't tell the difference between this and- Basic. It, again, I'm just not maybe good at that. Very basic Glen Levitt. And again, maybe that's a bad comparison. I just- Or maybe we've just never drank two of them next to each other you know, to see the comparison. We knew that with bourbon all the time the perfect Scotsman or woman to become a Patreon and support us so that we can go to Scotland and actually learn about the Scotch. Yeah, we'll, we'll find a Scottish person to pay for our trip to come over there and insult their whiskey. No, we will. I'm just getting a ton of brown sugar off the Johnny Drum now. In comparison, it's almost like I we don't I want an international incident. I even say this. This does make the Johnny Drum better than it normally is, I will admit. Okay. You know when you've been traveling overseas? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and you just miss certain things from home? Yes. Like, even if it's the most basic thing. McDonald's is a really good example. Yeah. And There's I love Mc McDonald's, McDonald's anytime. McDonald's everywhere. But even say, like, say something that you're not the biggest fan of, whatever it may be. Sure. But as soon as you get home, it's like, it's home. It reminds me of home. You know, even if it's a, a fast food chain you don't particularly like or wouldn't particularly mm -hmm. go to every time, but you you land back in America and there's one of them at the airport and you're hungry and you go eat it and you're like, it tastes like I'm back home. I loved everything I had when I was overseas, but when, there's something about coming home to your own normal. That's what this feels like. This feels just like a home. Yeah. And so, 
like you said, we're not the biggest Johnny Drum fans, but it tastes pretty damn good right now, I gotta tell you. <laughs> but so funny that you should say that, because before this review started, if you would have asked me, how do I feel about McAllen? Mm -hmm. Love it. 15 year, off the charts. <laughs> I've had, admittedly, too large of a pour. But I don't want any more. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't think this is the greatest bourbon in the world, but I prefer the flavor of that more. Do you find that scotch is one of those things that's good, but it wears out its welcome? Is that what you're kind of getting at with like, you have a nice pour of it, but then you just, you don't want any more of it. Like it's not something. So I need to do another experiment. My absolute favorite scotch is Balvenie. Okay. 12 year double oaked. I don't know a lot of details about it. I think it's just an 80 proofer. You normally spill that one. In fact, you do a high pour, like from space kind of like pour of that one. That's typically how you I work. I did do that once. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, Balvenie, I need to compare. I need to pick another bottle and do a comparison of this versus the Balvenie, because I genuinely love that one. But maybe I like Johnny Drum, no offense, but it's probably my least favorite bourbon, more even than Balvenie. Which, I mean, that's not really a surprise. We have a bourbon channel, not a scotch channel. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we would do very poorly with the scotch note. Well, and here's the thing, it's it's inexperience. That's well, really all it is. I and it's not meant to be an insult agree. at all. It's inexperience. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I'm sure people that are totally into scotch would drink bourbon and just, it may be like, oh God, it's just, it's too aggressive. Yep. It's too totally agree. dark. The charred oak is too much and you know. So, I think we both know where this is going. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean. We have, we have two in front of us. <laughs> this is where I really piss scotch drinkers off. Unfortunately, I took a drink and I no longer have enough to do the Benny yeah. Walker special. Here, throw some more in there. Oh, this is a vile and inappropriate, don't, you can't drink it till I at least I get won't. Some. So, so now we're mixing Johnny Drum and McAllen 15 so triple So Scotch cast. watch, uh, Scotch viewers mm -hmm. from the Scotland. At the end of videos, I think more people from America that drink Scotch well, are probably going to watch this. Well, hopefully, um, Ben likes to pour, and I've only recently started this. He likes to mix whatever the two things that we're doing. As if we're comparison. comparing two of them, when when there's this much left, you pour them together. And you know, this could be really good, and here's why. We've had a couple of four mash bill bourbons recently, mm -hmm. which essentially we just made. Or at least we increased like the- Like four grain? Yeah, four, sorry. No, because this has, this is but rye, we, corn, malted barley, and this is malted barley. But we really increased the malted barley. Oh yeah. Yeah, we added a lot of malted barley. Yeah. And this is- It has a nice nose to it, I'm Well, not this lie. is malted barley and this is malted barley. They're different, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, this is just for enzymes to break down exactly. the yeah. starches and make sugars. and. So I'm really hoping for brown sugar from this one, which typically delivers. And I still struggle to find the words to describe what malted barley tastes like when it's just a single malt. For me, it's apples and pears and fruit yeah, juice and floral Which and light. Which is kind of good. And like I like crisp, those flavors. Light fruit. I like those so flavors. Go in for the nose on this. And this, we might be actually proving the point we've been making this entire time. This was a 50 50 blend. Yep, I was close ish. I, and I'm getting mostly bourbon out of this. You know what? Speaking of mostly bourbon, that's my uh, Instagram it, it handle. Is. Yeah, and he's pretty good to that too. You should check him out. You know, caramel flavored. Apples are freaking amazing. Let's just stop with that. Ooh. All right, let's go in for the taste. You may have just insulted both Scotland and the United States and created the world's greatest liquor. Mm-hmm. It is kind of a caramel apple, isn't it? <laughs> it's freaking amazing. Like, oh my God. Like, I feel like it. The scotch definitely cuts down some of the the edge of the bourbon and the, the craziness. Yeah, like that brown sugar and oak of the you bourbon. You still get the pear apple kind of brightness, but it's totally covered by caramel, which is lovely. This is freaking amazing, and I'm not internet, you know, spoofing this. This is actually freaking awesome. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> 
So here's what I would say. So uh, now we're coming full circle here, and uh, I know this video is going on way too long. No, it's good. But it's People whatever Wednesday, it. so yeah. we can, you know. So there are no rules. Yeah. Me saying before that I have a hard time telling a lot of scotches apart and that I always get the same typical notes. Sure. I think if you wanted to blend a scotch and a bourbon together to try to replicate this, you could get a far less expensive scotch. Totally, totally agree. Than $125 or whatever this one was. Yep. I got this for free, so I don't know exactly what it was. <laughs> it was a gift, but. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of scotches that kind of have similar flavor profile, mm -hmm. and you definitely could have come in at. And then mix it with a better bourbon. Oh, there's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a pretty interesting blend, <laughs> to be honest. I feel like you get those nice dark brown sugars and caramels, but then you get that nice light fruity floralness you get of apple the apple and caramel and yeah. brown sugar. This is actually genuinely good. Yeah. I think we should just end it on this note. I mean, we definitely shouldn't go any further. <laughs> <laughs> this has gone on long enough. And if here's the thing. This is the uh, the little prize at the end of the video if people stuck with us this long to even see us now, do this blend. I genuinely think you need to title this video Johnny Drum. No, rephrase that. Title this video McAllen 15 Year versus Johnny Drum. <laughs> okay. That's how this video should start. But if start. people will have stuck with us for this long, thank you so this much. This is the for prize. Watching. Try blending a single malt. Well, this one's a Highland. It, to be honest, any um, Highland single malt. Yeah. Versus any decent bourbon. Yep. And see what happens. I think we should do this again with I a agree. couple of different ones. With a couple whiskeys. of different ones? Yeah. Because I genuinely, like, I am not. Let's pretending. mix Laphroaig 10 with no, like a that's... cask strength bourbon. See what happens. Yes, but that's not a very good comparison. Oh, no, not at all, but that, let's do that on another Whatever Wednesday. <laughs> That's a good idea, but... Whatever Wednesday should be like a science show. We'll just put on lab coats well, and just blend. Because we've already done like flights of things we yeah. would never normally drink together. We should start blending weird shit together <laughs> and just see what happens. This is freaking awesome, actually. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been McAllen 15, Triple Cask, and a guest appearance and a little... Uh, Blending oh, of Johnny he's, Drum. He's a 50% partner and equal equity share in the future endeavors. So this has been both McAllen 15, <laughs> Johnny Drum. <laughs> On the Bourbon Note, I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Whatever. <laughs>